Hmm, interesting. Hello, it's been a quiet few months. Late one night last November, my house was fine. <laughs> Jordan Shanks Markovina was born on the 18th of August 1989 somewhere in New South Wales, Australia. Jordan grew up in a poor household with his mother on disability benefits. As a child he enjoyed playing video games and throwing water balloons but when he hit year 11 in school he decided that the path that he was on led nowhere good so he made changes to his life and started to study. Even as a young man Jordan knew that he had the gift of the gab and after watching a comedian named Will Anderson on a TV show named at the glass house he thought to himself I can do this and he worked towards being a comedian. Jordan was fascinated with the thought of getting his ideas into other people's heads and making the world a better place as he saw it so when he left Newtown High School of the Performing Arts he went to the University of New South Wales to study politics. But Jordan didn't really enjoy this so he had spent most of his time in the university library reading book after book about comedic theory. He would take a very tactical approach to comedy learning how to use his facial expressions to punctuate his points and to communicate without saying a word. He would also become obsessed with self-help books reading many of them in order to achieve his goals. Jordan's first comedy gig was at an event named Class Clown. As you may have noticed Jordan is a rather dashing gentleman so while studying at university he became a model doing many photo shoots in both Australia and South East Asia. He would do modelling for eight years and seems to have been successful with this endeavour working with brands such as Gucci and Top Man. Jordan was a young man travelling the world surrounded by the beautiful people but this isn't what he longed for, he wanted more. So he started to do internships at TV stations and radio stations. Again Jordan wanted more and didn't really enjoy working within the system so he decided to make his own way in the world. Jordan set up his YouTube channel on the 13th of February 2013 with his first video being titled What's in? Question mark. Tips for fashion this season, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. This is a comedy skit talking about Australian fashion trends. Jordan came up with the name Friendly Geordies in a few minutes and thought that he would change it later on but never did. Most of his early videos are short comedy skits that are very Australian is the only way I can describe them really. His first big hit came when he made a video titled High School Heroes. In this video he had a character named Joseph who would later evolve into a character named Yilmaz. Yilmaz was based on a Middle Eastern boy that he went to school with and the Yilmaz series would become a fan favourite. This content helped the Friendly Geordies channel achieve over 10,000 subscribers in its first year. But again, Again, Jordan wanted more so he began to mix in a few political videos with his normal comedy content. The Friendly Geordies channel would continue to grow with Jordan using Facebook to drive traffic to his YouTube channel. This worked well for him but sadly came to an end when Facebook made algorithmic changes and Jordan's comedy skits would no longer be the big growth driver that they once were. After this Jordan started to pump out shallow content as he puts it as that was what YouTube wanted. This began to grow his channel more and more. Some of the shallow content that he pumped out at this stage were reviews of the reality TV show Maths, which is an Australian dating show featuring women who have replaced their lips with slugs who then get married to men they don't know and they all end up cheating on each other. My ex-girlfriend made me watch it so I know it very well. Honestly, I kind of enjoyed it. Some of the other shallow content was the ever popular top 10 lists about stuff that no one really cares about but watches anyway. Videos about the Warhammer game and painting tutorials for the figures of Warhammer. Jordan also has a second channel named Jordan Shanks which seems to be a passion project for him as it gets nowhere near the same attention as friendly Geordies. This is a self-help channel where he gives advice to people. Anyway, the COVID pandemic seems to have been a turning point for friendly Geordies as from this point he seems to become focused on politics and doing investigative journalism, the latter being something that he evidently has a great talent for. Australia seems to be pretty full of corruption so Jordan would make exposés on what he found all mixed in with his light-hearted comedic style.
On the 23rd of November 2022, the home of Jordan Shanks was firebombed. This was done in the middle of the night when Jordan was meant to be sleeping and he didn't have any smoke alarms, so this was a serious attempt on his life. Luckily for Jordan, he's a bit of a scatterbrain and lost his keys that night, so had to sleep at his friend's house. After the firebombing, Jordan was given police protection with the police saying that they suspect organised criminal networks being involved. It's worth noting that the house next door was set on fire six days before and the police said that the arson attack on Jordan's house was targeted with liquid accelerant and was driven by strong intent. You gotta love police talk. That attempted murder was done with strong intent. No sh Sherlock. Someone has been arrested for this, so we kind of know who did it. But before I reveal this information, let's look at some of the enemies that Friendly Geordies has made over the years. We are going to cover a wide range of people and for legal reasons, I guess. I'm not saying that people featured in the following part are in any way implicated with the crime. I'm just giving information for people to make up their own minds and to create an interesting video. As we will see, Australians seem to love suing each other, so I'm just making it very clear that only the person arrested is implicated in the crime. Giovanni Dominic Barillaro was born on the 14th of November 1971 in Australia to Italian immigrant parents. Giovanni decided to use the name John as I guess it was more relatable to non-Italian Australians. He was the spaghetti eating champion for 25 years in a row. Pretty impressive stuff. He seems to really like food. I'm not calling him fat, there's just a lot of photos of him with food on the internet. So his story with Friendly Geordie starts off pretty innocuously really. Friendly Geordie's made a video about this woman whose name I can't be bothered to pronounce as she's not really that important to the story. Anyway, she was the Premier of New South Wales with John being her Deputy Premier. From what I can tell, and bear in mind I have no idea about Australian politics, the Deputy Premier is in fact a pretty powerful position. Jordan made a video about Gladys complaining about her environmental policies, giving her the nickname Koala, to which her little buddy John took offence and complained about this on a radio show. Jordan then made another video which featured a little skit of John and Gladys running over a koala bear. So I'm guessing at the moment you're wondering how does any of this relate to his house being firebombed? Well, the John Barillaro friendly Geordie story goes to some weird unexpected places, so stick with me. Jordan likes to make fun of John being Italian, doing impressions of him and comparing him to Mario, so John started to call Jordan racist. Jordan didn't really like this, so he made a video about John claiming that he was responsible for bushfires due to him underfunding the correct departments. In this video, Jordan also claimed that John gave millions of taxpayers' money to a failing oyster company which one of his friends owned, and that he was degrading a national park, pushing local species to the brink of extinction due to him protecting wild horses which are not native to the area. Jordan claims that John is protecting the horses due to a $10,000 donation from someone who owns a company that runs horse tours in the park. The real bombshell in this video is when Jordan reveals the fact that he filmed the whole video in John's second home. And Jordan claims that he fornicated in many of the rooms of the estate. Nice. So this is John's second home and the internet tells me that the annual salary of the Deputy Premier of New South Wales is 343000 Australian dollars. Anyway, Jordan didn't break into his home, he in fact rented it from Airbnb. Jordan then proceeded to hide Mario toys all over the home for John to find. After this video, John demanded that the estate have a bug sweep at the taxpayer's expense that would have cost them $10,000, but thankfully the police declined. At this point, Jordan was like a dog with a bone and just wouldn't let go, so he made many videos about John. In one of these videos, he claims that John was involved in a debt trap on a club that pocketed John $700,000. And in another video, he called John to ask him if he was cheating on his wife. Unknown to Jordan at the time, this video was when John contacted the council counter terrorism and special tactics command who began to investigate Jordan. This story has so many rabbit holes but I'll come on to the counter terrorism police later on. For now let's continue with the John Barillaro part of the story. So John got in contact with defamation lawyers who sent Jordan a letter. Jordan then did the only logical thing and went to a speaking event that John was doing dressed as Mario and confronted him about this. Unsurprisingly John decided to take Jordan to court but John had a cunning plan. He wouldn't tell Jordan 
Jordan about this, but instead just release it to the press. Once Jordan found out that he was being sued for defamation, he decided to go to John's lawyer so that he could serve him the papers. But Jordan's a little prankster and he had a fake hand, so when the lawyer gave him the papers, they fell on the floor. Got him. So the Counterterrorism and Special Tactics Command have a special unit named the Fixated Person Unit. This unit was now looking for Jordan and went to his home to arrest him, but luckily he was not home. Jordan only found out about this because one of his neighbours told him, so Jordan's lawyers called the unit to confirm that they had gone to his home, but after seeking legal advice, they were no longer looking to arrest him. Then Jordan's producer saw John in the street and tried to give him back the defamation paperwork as it had some big mistakes on it, but John just ignored him. A few hours later, the fixated persons unit turned up at his producer's home and arrested him. The producer tried to give his mum his mobile phone, but the fixated persons unit didn't like this as they thought it was evidence, so a scuffle broke out and his mum and her dog were injured. The producer was charged with two counts of stalking and intimidation, so Jordan set up a crowdfunding legal fund which raised over one million dollars. This event seems to have been fairly big news in the land down under with John appearing on TV claiming that he never had anything to do with the arrest. Friendly Geordies then released a video proving that John did have something to do with the arrest and implied that the fixated persons unit was kind of a secret police working to enforce the desires of the rich and powerful. In a clear show that they had nothing to hide, the police then tried to suppress the video but the courts decided against this and ordered the police to pay Jordan and his producer $20,000 in legal costs. Friendly Geordies had won the case against the police trying to remove his video but the defamation case with John was still live and his producer still had criminal charges ongoing. So at this stage John decided to resign as the Deputy Prime Minister of New South Wales stating that the main reason for this was racist bullying that he was getting online. Comparing himself to a child being bullied. I'll just remind you that this is one of the most powerful politicians in the whole of Australia. The defamation lawsuit against Jordan was progressing nicely for John. Jordan had asked for the case to be seen by a jury, but John opposed this due to COVID regulations. In a convenient twist of fate, John was the person responsible for the state's COVID regulations. Jordan's request was denied and he was ordered to pay costs for asking for a jury to see the case. One of the main points in the defamation case was that Jordan accused John of lying to Parliament, but due to a 17th century law called parliamentary privilege, nothing that is said in Parliament was allowed to be used in court. So basically Jordan had to explain how John had lied without saying what John actually said. Friendly Geordies lost a defamation case. Well, kind of. This was settled out of court in the end with Jordan paying costs to John of $100,000 and agreeing not to sell key rings that depicted John as a scrotum. <laughs> yep, Jordan had been selling these at his merch store. After just losing $100,000, you may think that Jordan would leave John alone. But no, he uploaded a video about a website named Ashley Madison. This is a website that marketed itself as a dating website for people that wanted to cheat on their spouses. This website was hacked with the data of the people using it being leaked. One of John's email addresses was in the leak with his username for the website being John loves to lick. <laughs> oh dear. Apart from being a funny video, this had wider implications as John was suing Google for hosting the video where Jordan phoned him to see if he was cheating on his wife. This video was later removed from YouTube by Google. I guess that just having an email address used on the website didn't really prove anything as John won his court case against Google with a payout of $715,000. Around this time, the criminal charges were dropped against a friendly Geordie's producer and he was awarded a payout to cover his costs. After resigning from office, John became the executive director for a construction company named Coronation. This is another rabbit hole that we'll explore in a little bit. It was then announced that John had been given a new job. He was going to be the New South Wales Senior Trade Commissioner in New York, a job that pays half a million dollars. Pretty lucky for John that he seems to have been able to fall on his feet after his savage bullying. Well, this sweet little job was a new thing that never existed until John created it when he was in office. With him being quoted to say, This is a job for when I get the fuck out of this place. This was a bit of a scandal in Australia with John being brought in front of an investigation committee where he said he didn't plan to resign from office to get this better paying job and had only decided to resign a few days before he had announced it to the world. Evidence was then shown that this was not the case so John declined to appear at the hearings anymore due to mental health reasons. The senior trade commission job was then taken from John but the press were out for blood and they ambushed him after he had just finished finish eating pizza to which John 
started to attack them. Friendly Geordies then used the legal fund that he had set up to pay for the cameraman's expenses to take John to court. But sadly, the charges were dismissed due to John's mental health. In a video titled Coronation, Jordan mainly talks about a man named Stephen Toy and a man named Andy Nahas. Stephen was a self-employed plumber who ended up in debt to a biker gang member and Andy Nahas, kind of. The debt is confusing and not very important to be honest, but Stephen was kidnapped at gunpoint with the biker demanding $50,000. Stephen was then and beaten but was unable to pay the money so was released and went to hospital where he was treated for a broken eye socket, head trauma, a wound to his chest, broken teeth and severe swelling to his face. While in hospital, the biker turned up in an attempt to intimidate Stephen, but Stephen went to the police and the biker and Andy were arrested. After some time passed, Stephen informed the police that he no longer wanted to be a witness in the case, then him and his lawyer disappeared so the charges were dropped. Andy got a $30,000 payout for the legal costs for the arrest. On a side note, the biker was later arrested for an unrelated Jordan then shows photos of Andy with the Al Medine crime family. This family are said to be one of the most dangerous in Australia. Since 2016, they have been in a feud with another family that has resulted in at least 11 fatal sh the Nahas family own Coronation Property, which is a very large construction company, and is the place that our little mate John Barillaro got a job as executive director after he resigned from office. Pretty much the point of this video, as far as I can tell, was to show that John is friends with some very dangerous people. <laughs> So you may recognise this man from the arrest of the friendly Geordie's producer. His name is Matthew McQueen and he works for the Fixated Persons Unit. The Fixated Persons Unit is a subgroup of the Counter-Terrorism and Special Tactics Command. The Fixated Persons Unit was set up after an armed siege and is designed to stop lone wolf terrorists. So why are they even mentioned in this story? Good question. From what I can make out, it seems like Australia doesn't have enough lone wolves to justify this unit, so they seem to be mostly used for stalkers. Kind of. After John contacted the police about friendly Geordies, they put him and his producer under surveillance for many, many months. When his producer was arrested, Jordan went on to make many videos about the fixated person's unit and Matthew McQueen, who Jordan seems to have taken a real disliking to. In these videos, Jordan outlines how the fixated person's unit seemed to be working as a strong arm for people in public office, with 50% of their targets being people fixated on politicians or other public office holders. In one of these videos, he gives details about the case of a man codenamed Rob. Rob's daughter was being bullied at school, so Rob contacted the school but didn't get the action that he was looking for, so he began to email the school over and over again, trying to sort out the issue. I guess Rob sent one too many emails, so the headmaster spoke to one of his contacts at the police and the fixated person's unit was put onto the case. Now, I'll just point out that I have no idea what was in the emails that he was sending, so maybe he was sending some crazy stuff, but maybe not. Anyway, Anyway, this investigation was led by Mr McQueen, who then began to follow Rob for many months. But after all of these months, the only thing that McQueen could arrest Rob for was jaywalking, until one day. Rob went to pick up his daughter from school, but she had been kicked by her bully. Rob then claims that he told his daughter that if this happens again, she should kick her bully back. But there was a teacher there when Rob said this, and the teacher's version of events was that Rob told his seven-year-old daughter to kick the teacher. Now, before we carry on, I'll just just remind you that this unit is part of the Counter-Terrorism and Special Tactics Command. So, Mr McQueen sprang into action, seeking legal advice about the matter as he wanted to charge Rob with inciting someone to commit assault. But as Rob's daughter was only seven, she was unable to commit a crime. What a predicament. Rob was arrested for recruiting persons to engage in criminal activity. Jordan has obtained footage of the CCTV in the court case and implies that McQueen may be coaching the witnesses in the case. Rob was found guilty of this crime, but this was later overturned with Rob being given legal costs. The appeal judge found that McQueen didn't undertake a reasonable investigation with McQueen not even asking Rob's daughter if her dad had asked her to kick the teacher. I only really bring this up to demonstrate 
demonstrate what Jordan is trying to get across in this video about the fixated person's unit. He paints a picture of a unit that doesn't really care if you've committed a crime, they just harass you until they can find some trumped up charges. This is basically the point that he's trying to make. McQueen has explored suing Jordan for defamation by getting the police union to pay for a lawyer to look over the case, but nothing came of this. The police also tried to get Jordan arrested for contempt of court for making jokes about them, but this was denied. So they tried to get a suppression order on one of his videos of his producer being arrested, but this was denied. Jordan has called for McQueen to be sacked many times, saying he is unfit to be a policeman and that he didn't even have an arrest warrant for his producer. This matter has been brought up in many investigation commissions, but as far as I know, nothing has ever come from these. Club's New South Wales is a very powerful gambling lobby with a group of very attractive smiling people running it. Apparently Australia is one of the biggest gambling nations in the world with New South Wales having the biggest gambling losses on the planet. So you can guess how much money is involved with this one. Friendly Geordies has made a few videos about Club's New South Wales mostly revolving around money laundering. In the clubs that they oversee are what Australians call pokies. These are called fruit machines in the UK and I think Americans call them slot machines. Anyway in New South Wales they are very easy to launder money through as all you need to do is put money in then withdraw it back out on a card then you can go and cash the card out to clean your money. You don't even need to gamble you just need to put the money in then withdraw it on the card. As you can no doubt guess the organised criminals that wash money this way won't be happy with Jordan trying to stop this practice. In one video he was joined by other well-known Australian YouTubers I did a thing and boy boy. The three of them then set about to see how easy it was to launder money. Spoiler alert, it wasn't very hard. They did this while wearing a t-shirt saying that they were laundering money, then while wearing a comic criminal outfit, and then with a briefcase full of cash and a fake hand attached to it. In total, they washed $22,500 in one day. Really, Jordan's problems with Clubs New South Wales started when he did an interview with a whistleblower who used to work for Clubs New South Wales. This guy was responsible for making sure that they were compliant with money laundering regulations. But after becoming disheartened with how much corruption he saw, he decided to go to the press claiming that up to 90% of the clubs were involved with money laundering. This guy was then sued by Clubs New South Wales, which cost him nearly $1 million. Oh yeah, the whistleblower also had terminal cancer. Clubs New South Wales then filed criminal charges against Friendly Geordie, claiming that the video was intimidation. These charges were later dropped. Our little buddy John Barillaro is also involved, because of course he is. He is the hepatitis of this story, refusing to ever go away. While he was Deputy Premier, he blocked an attempt to stop money laundering by making these clubs use cashless cards. John claims that he did this to avoid red tape that would strangle these clubs. In another weird twist of fate, John tried to become the CEO of Clubs New South Wales, but this was rejected. The timing of this was when he attacked the cameraman, but had the charges dropped due to mental health. Not well enough to face charges, but well enough to run one of the biggest lobbies in Australia. Nice. It was in fact someone named this. I've spent a long time trying to figure out how to pronounce this and trying to remember it, but I can't, so I'm just going to call him Toofy Jr. I guess I should say he allegedly did it as he was arrested but not yet convicted for the crime. The police say that they think that three other people were also involved, but they have yet to arrest these people. So Toofy Jr. is allegedly connected to the Al Medine crime family from the coronation video. As far as I can tell, no real motive has been given for this crime, so I'll leave it up to you to make your own minds up on what's going on. After this arrest, Friendly Geordies released a statement saying that he had been forced to remove the coronation video due to threats on the lives of the people involved. In this video, Jordan claims that the police have informed him that the people in that video are the main suspects in the investigation for the firebombing. Jordan also makes it clear that he feels the state and journalists are afraid of these people 
people that are threatening him to delete this video and are doing nothing to help him. He never says who is threatening him, but it's pretty easy to read between the lines. The video Coronation has now been deleted from the Friendly Jordy's channel, but has been re-uploaded many times by many other people, so it would seem that the attempt to silence the information in that video has only brought more eyes to it. And here I am making a video about it, so I guess the Streisand effect is a real thing. I've only really scratched the surface of the friendly Geordie's channel and if you follow his channel there will be plenty of storylines that you feel I've missed. Like Clive Palmer who is one of the richest men in Australia. Jordan made a video about him and I'm sure you can imagine what happened next. Clive sued him for defamation. The main reason for this was because Jordan called him a fatty mcfuckhead. After he was sent a letter by Clive's lawyers, Jordan made a video setting out to prove that Clive was indeed a fatty mcfuckhead. He also sold merch to this effect. From what I can tell, the case was dropped against Jordan, so I guess his video proved his case pretty well. On a side note, Clive is planning to build a replica of the Titanic to sell people around the world, which is pretty cool. One thing that I will say is that I know nothing about Australian politics and this video is really based on information that Jordan has given. From what I can tell, there are two main parties in Australia, the Liberal Party and the Labour Party. Some people claim that Jordan is a Labour shill and to be fair, he does only seem to make videos exposing members of the Liberal Party. Whatever his political alliances are, Jordan does do a good job of showing how corrupt the Liberal Party are in New South Wales. It's honestly pretty alarming and I'd say it's a good thing that he's shining a light on this stuff. I wish we had someone like him in England really. That being said, I do kind of feel sorry for John Barillaro. He was just quietly going about his business, bleeding the country dry like many have done before him. Then all of a sudden, this little peasant starts to make video after video about all of his misdeeds. Sadly, all of the tried and tested methods of trying to silence this little upstart blow up in his face. So he tries to innovate, but the things that he tries just rub salt in his already burnt face. Poor little mite, let's hope that he's doing well in whatever hole he's crawled into. The Friendly Geordie's channel is still going strong and I'm sure we'll have many more interesting stories from this channel in the years to come. Let's just hope that he leaves the Almadines alone. Watch this video about Charlie Veach. Amongst other things, he enjoys kicking people on the streets of Manchester. If you are still watching this video, then you are a true hero. But not as much as the channel members and Patreons. You are the fire raging through my loins and... Bye-bye.